When Michael Foucault wrote Discipline and Punish, he introduced us to the idea of docile bodies. While Foucault may have been talking about soldiers in his example of docile bodies, based on his explanation, I found that college sports teams also fit the criteria for what encompasses a docile body. Through looking at the University of Delaware women's soccer team, you can see that the coaches here have tried to make their players docile bodies. In this video, I will show and explain to you how. Follow me on a journey to see how a women's soccer team was transformed by their coaches into docile bodies using techniques such as the art of distributions, control of activity, and the composition of forces. Before we begin, I want to give you background on the subject. To have docile bodies, you need to subject individuals to a regimented timetable and way of life. The purpose of the athletes, like the soldiers, is not necessarily to make them docile bodies, but instead is to make them more productive and more useful individuals to channel the ability of the body into more efficient and productive ways. As Foucault said on page 138, the human body was entering a machinery of power that explores it, breaks it down, and rearranges it. A political anatomy, which was also a mechanics of power, was being born. It defined how one may have a hold over others' bodies, not only so that they may do what one wishes, but so that they may operate as one wishes, with the techniques, the speed, and the efficiency that it determines. What Foucault argued here was that if we begin shaping bodies from the get-go and managing them in particular kinds of ways in order to get them to constantly act in the way that we want them to, then we can channel their activity in particular kinds of ways. Foucault wanted us to use this technique to constantly produce better citizens, and similarly, coaches use the same technique on their players to make them be the ideal athlete that they are looking for. Just remember, docile bodies become the way that they are through a crafted technique. Now I will show you the techniques involved in the making of docile bodies and how they apply and can be found in a college soccer team. I will be demonstrating to you the art of distributions, control of activity, and the composition of forces. Docile bodies are made through the art of distributions. The art of distribution simply means the management of space and how we can use this management of space to get people to act in certain specific kinds of ways. This can mean allowing or permitting movement, grouping people into specific places, enclosure, and also partitioning of space. The coaches here at UD have artfully distributed their players by having the players live together in houses so that your teammates essentially become your roommates. This is what Foucault described as enclosure because it is a specific kind of technique for grouping like people together, and as a result of this, they would engage in their specific activities. Like soldiers in barracks, the athletes live together to have a more we sense. This goes beyond housing, too. When the athletes are on the road, they travel together on the bus and are assigned to rooms by the coaches in hotels. Assigning rooms shows that the coaches aim to create docile bodies by organizing the spaces to maximize and control their players' behavior. We always travel together, and the coaches encourage us to live together because it keeps us grounded and focused, which is what we are supposed to be doing. We have to live together because we are encouraged to be very close and like best friends. It means we needed to be like roommates and because we're teammates and stuff. They always want us to be in contact with each other, and they group us together um, on like away trips and stuff because they want to be able to control our behavior in terms of our like living space and. Who we're, who we're with consistently. In order to have docile bodies, the coaches also have to control the activity of their players. Coaches have to manage details and activities for their players, and they give a lot of time to do certain activities, which is how the coaches essentially stay in control. The coaches manage time in a way that they introduce routine to their individuals. Like a soldier, the athletes have their times very strictly monitored and regulated so that it can infiltrate habits. Foucault argues that it is essential to have docile bodies so programmed that even the slightest of details is regulated. This is clear on page 156 when Foucault says, The body, required to be docile in its minutest operations, opposes and shows the conditions of functioning proper to an organism. 
time is one of these minute details. And an example of the athlete's allotted times is practices, games, weightlifting, and study hall. The coaches keep their players on a strict time schedule so they can get the most out of them. Coaches make it their job to maximize the time and efficiency of tasks without having to allot even more time. As Foucault said for the soldiers, the coaches train their players for maximum efficiency. Foucault uses the examples of soldiers having monotonous training and prepping their guns constantly so that it will be ingrained inside them and then the task will become habitual. Likewise, coaches have their players do the same warm-ups daily with the same stretches and the same practice and study hall times, and even they wear the same practice gear every single day. Coaches want to see how they can utilize their players in an efficient way without wasting time, and this makes them human machines that can do things automatically. As Foucault said again on page 156, the disciplinary controls of activity belong to a whole series of researches theoretical or practical, into the natural machinery of bodies, but they began to discover in them specific processes. Behavior and its organized requirements gradually replaced the simple physics of movement. Summarized, this quote shows the importance of creating a body that is maximally efficient for the task in which it is designed to do. We have the same practice gear every day. We have practice the same time every day. It's a really regimented schedule for us. They pretty much tell us where to be, when to be there, and what to wear there. We have community service, study hall, and practice times. They make us dress the same, have certain time slots. It's all very regulated. Lastly, an equal component of training docile bodies is to have composition of forces. What Foucault means by this is a relation among people, and then further organizing the relations between these said people to make them maximally efficient as a group instead of just as individuals. This has its roots in military science because you need a fighting force to work together collectively instead of individually. Think of this. How do you put people together to have them work as one? And how do we organize the capabilities of different individuals so they can be maximally productive? This is essential for coaches because they need to know what their players can contribute and how their players can be utilized to do their best on the field. As Foucault said on page 164, thus, a new demand appears to which discipline must respond, to construct a machine whose effect will be maximized by the concerted articulation of the elementary parts of which it is composed. And then he takes this one step further again on page 164, by saying, discipline is no longer simply an art of distributing bodies, of extracting time from them and accumulating it, but of composing forces in order to obtain an efficient machine. This is meant to exemplify that soldiers have become the paradigm of the docile body, but what it really says is that you can produce an efficient, rational person who is maximally efficient as an individual and also in a fighting force, and that this is the desired end goal. This translates to broader society, namely to athletics. Coaches need to figure out which players work the best together, and then they need to put those players together and find their strengths as a whole so that they can achieve the final goal of winning. Composition of forces is essential for soldiers, as Foucault points out, but it's even more essential for athletes because a team cannot win unless every player puts their best effort forward and then combines their strengths to produce a flawless and maximally efficient result in the end. They split us up into offense and defense. They want us to develop our strengths individually first, and then they combine us with other girls to see how our strengths play off of each other. They really try to make our strengths and isolate them, then combine them with other players' strengths, almost as if they're creating a machine. We can't be a team unless we, put, we all put our strengths together to make one big outgoing force. So, Foucault may have been talking about soldiers in terms of docile bodies when he wrote Discipline and Punish, but I have proved now that docile bodies can be found in broader society, especially in athletics and especially here with the UD women's soccer team. Through the art of distributions, the control of activity, and the composition of forces, you can now see that docile bodies really do exist and are made through coaches using my mentioned techniques here at the university. Thank you for watching my demonstration.